All right guys, we're back out here on the training pitch. Me and Omar are gonna get another session in today. Omar's running the full session today, so he's setting up all the drills. I have no idea what we're doing, but I know it's gonna be good because it's Omar setting them up, so they're always high quality drills. Omar, question for you. We had some people in the comments, because you're a pretty experienced central midfielder. To break it down, if you had to pick three attributes that make a successful central midfielder, obviously there's different styles of midfielders, mm -hmm. but universal, what are three attributes that you would say central midfielders should be working on if they want to reach a high level? Oh, the first one um, would be spacing for me. Um, yeah. I follow the likes of Busquets mm -hmm. and the way he reads the game before he even gets the ball. It's absolutely out of this world. The second is his first touch. It's always in the position that he can clearly get it off his feet as quick as possible. And then the third would just be being in the position to recover. Right? Uh, for a defensive midfielder, you don't want to push up too far. Okay. So you want to so if you want to find a way to be in the center of the park without constantly doing 40 yard sprints mm. up and down. So that's the third is just being in, in a position where you can recover, right? And also help the offense at the same time. So that goes with kind of understanding your role. If you're yep. a defensive midfielder, your yep. you're on, you're defending first and then attacking when possible. If you're an attacking player, you're attacking Correct. first, defending when your team needs kind of Correct. thing. But yeah, some great advice there from Omar. So I know some of you were asking about that. So yeah, there's some tips for you. But today's session is gonna revolve around that. As you'll notice with a lot of Omar sessions, they really hone in on the fundamentals, the absolute essentials. Because if you don't have a good foundation of all the essentials, there's no point having any flashy skills or any other more advanced techniques or anything like that. You really need to have those down to an excellent level before moving on to anything else. So we're always working on the basics. Always, always, always. You can never get too good at the basics. So it should be a really good session. I'm excited for it, so let's get into the warm-up. So our warm-up is exactly the same as always. You guys know the drill by now, so we just jog across the 18-yard box, going in different directions, different movements, getting some dynamic stretches, just getting the blood flowing. This is really gonna allow you to perform better in your training session and prevent injury. I'm gonna tell you this every time because it's just that important. So make sure you're warming up for at least 10 minutes before you get into your training. Then we moved into our first area of our workout. So this is what we're doing. Omar loves to use this one for warming up and I can see why because it's a really good drill for working on shuffling those feet and getting those one touch passing in. It works on your coordination as well because I'm listening to his commands and reacting off what he is directing me to do. So working on some one touch both left and right foot and then each time I've played it back to him he's going to let me know what I need to do. So this is going to really replicate the kind of mentality you need for a match because in the middle of a match there's going to be so many things going on that sometimes it can be distracting and even the basic technique like a first time inside of the foot pass can seem even more challenging. So this drill is really just preparing us physically and mentally. Then we moved into another variation of this one. So this time just checking away from that square then coming back into it. So just reenacting losing that defender by throwing our shoulder down, making a sideways movement like we're gonna check into that space. And then on his command, I'm taking my touch through the cones. So it's a very tight square. So I really have to be accurate with that first touch, which is gonna be really essential for you central midfielders out there. It's that one position on the pitch where your touch needs to be really tight and really under control so you don't give it away. Then we made the box even smaller. As you can see, it's a really tight square now. So again, making it even more challenging. So the touches and the passes have to be accurate. Again, checking away towards that cone as well, acting like we're throwing off the defender. So this one I found really challenging, just making sure that touch was clean, then returning it to him. No more than two touches allowed. Then Omar progressed the drill to make it even more match realistic. So doing exactly like we were before, checking away from that box to lose our defender, checking back into the box to receive the ball. And then upon Omar's command, I'm taking my first touch either side of the box through the cones and then finding those small goals either side. So the scenario in a match that this is replicating is when you're a central midfielder, sometimes you'll receive the ball along the ground from your centre back or maybe the goalkeeper and you've got pressure on your back. You've got a defender tight to you so you've got to take a clean first touch away from them and then relieve pressure by finding your fullback. You'll see this happen all the time at the top level. Sometimes teams will play the ball into the midfield just so that they can relieve pressure and attack 
from the wing. So it's very important to take sharp, controlled touches with this, trying to relieve the ball within two touches, being very efficient. So again, a very match realistic drill. So it's really gonna help us when it comes to a situation in a match because we would have rehearsed this so many times in training. Then we moved into another match specific scenario, this time adding a bit of explosive speed with it, but a very short distance. So this is just a walkthrough of the drill. We're starting at a cone without the ball, checking into space to receive the ball, one, two, checking out, and then receiving the ball and driving towards that cone. So we did this a few times through, Omar was timing it, and then he was just watching, and then he gave me some pointers in a minute that really helped me reduce my time. So it's really important to pay attention to this. This is something that's really important for you central midfielders. I'm a winger, but it's good to work on these central midfielder skills because it's very technical work. It's really going to help me in any position on the pitch, even as a winger. But this is the point that Omar made. He said, when I'm turning on the ball, I'm keeping the ball tight to my feet. So he gave me a little bit of advice. That if I check over my shoulder and there's enough space, take a heavier first touch so I can get up to top speed. It can shave valuable seconds and allow you to get on the attack a lot quicker. So I took his advice and it actually did pay off a lot. So checking back into that space off the cone, as you can see, my first touch is now going in the direction I want to go. So instead of getting it under control and then driving into the space, I'm doing it all in one motion. So a quick check over the shoulder, push the ball into that space, and it ended up reducing my time by over a second. So you can see better from this angle the area of the pitch we're working on. So it's like we've received the ball in the central midfield, checked a way to create space, and then we're driving towards the goal. The space has opened up, and then you can either thread through a striker, a winger, or you can take a shot yourself. So this is a second variation of the one we worked on. Same pattern at the start, so one, two, but then we're actually checking around that cone and taking a first touch inside so we're kind of spinning off our defender again omar gave some really good points in a minute as you can see my first touch on that first repetition there i took the touch in front of my body and then spun on it so basically what omar's relaying to me right here is he's saying if you can take your touch immediately behind you by flicking your foot flicking your toes in the direction you want to go so he'll just demonstrate for you here as i play the ball in he takes the touch across his body, then it's gonna allow you to have more time and space on the other side of the defender. So I took his advice into account and it actually did reduce the time. So as you can see there, actually pushing the ball across the cone, instead of controlling it in front of my body and then taking the touch, I did it all in one movement. So it was allowing me to take some seconds off of my time. Then we worked on one final variation of this drill before including some finishing in. So this time doing the exact same pattern, but when we get to that cone to receive the ball, instead of spinning inside of that cone, we're actually opening up our body, allowing the ball to come across so we can turn 180 degrees and then accelerate into the space. This is a vital skill for you central midfielders out there. Some players who used to do this perfectly, players like Cesc Fabregas, Iniesta, Javi Hernandez, they could turn defending into attack in the split of of a second so make sure you work on this one if you want to be more effective in the central midfield then we did a few reps of the exact same drill but this time adding some finishing in to complete it so before we were just dribbling to the cone and stopping this time we're ending with a shot on goal so just like at the start of our training session when we had that first touch box drill and we included the small goals either side we're just adding some end product into our drills and that's what you want to progress your training sessions to do is to actually replicate game scenario so in everything that you do in a match whether you're dribbling having a good first touch the whole point of it is to have some end product at the end of it if you have really good dribbling ability but can't pass a ball 10 feet you can't shoot it's just going to be a waste of your ability so anytime you're working on your dribbling your shooting make it game realistic so if you're dribbling through some cones end with a pass into a goal a shot onto a goal or a cross so you're actually working on your end product all the time you're getting used to actually doing something after the move because that's what's going to happen on match day so we're working on this first touch into that space Omar was giving me some good tips on opening up my body really pushing the ball into that space so a quick check over the shoulder as you would do with a central midfielder pushing the ball into the space to exploit it and then your first touch is going to be a lot more fluent if the first touch is too tight to your body it's going to get stuck under your feet and you're not going to be able to generate the power to have a good accurate shot 
So pushing the ball into that space, striking it, either bending it far post along the ground or into the corner, whatever it may be, or striking it nice and hard at the near post. Because the goalkeeper is going to be slightly biased towards that near post, he won't be fully covering it. So if you do hit it towards the near post, it's got to have more power on it. So there'll be a bigger gap at the far post, so that's when you're going to go for more accuracy. Then you can see we develop the drill again to work on that inside touch where we're spinning around the cone but again adding that finishing element to it as well to work on our end product. So we're working on this continuously for a few minutes and as you'll see my legs are getting really tired by this point. When you're doing those explosive movements repeatedly you're going to build up that lactic acid and your quality of your touch and your finishing and everything will go down slightly so you need to be extra focused at this point but again this is what's going to happen in a match as well. If if you've been playing intense for 90 minutes towards that last 10 minutes the quality can go down so this is what we're trying to do build that endurance and keep our touches at a high quality for the full duration of the game all right guys that's the end of the session probably one of the toughest sessions omar and i have done together so far so many explosive movements in there which really fatigue you over the course of the training session so really good stuff and really replicating game scenarios there enjoyed that a lot and as Omar says, remember, if you are a centre midi out there, try working on your first touch a lot. That's going to be really important. You're going to help you dictate the game, work on your spacing. And something that's going to really help you with that is watching top level professionals. Seeing what they're doing, seeing how many times they're checking over their shoulder, watching them off the ball as well. I think as footballers, when we're watching highlights, we're very attracted to the ball. We want to see where the ball's going, looking at players dribbling on the ball. But try and be more critical when watching a game. See what players are doing off of the ball as well. Because these are the things that are going to give you more time and space. Get you in the right positions to help your team out. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you smash that like button. Hit the subscribe button for weekly training videos. And I will see you guys in my next video.